I mentioned in uh, the previous video that I think that um, one of the worst fates that can befall someone is to be highly intelligent and have one's intelligence derailed by um, a dreadful mood disorder. Um, there's another pretty awful fate that I can imagine as well, and that has to do with my view of death and, I suppose, consequently my view of life. In a certain sense, I suppose, my view of life is you're just essentially preparing for the moment that you die. Um, a terrible fate must be, uh, and I'm sure we all know some people that have died this way, to uh, lay there on your deathbed, you know that death is coming, and um, you look back over what your life was and you say, oh boy, did I ever screw that up. A lot of people, I suppose, it's regrets of uh, their problems with their family members. Maybe people have completely botched their uh, parent parenting skills or whatever and completely alienated their kids. or um, At least they blame themselves for the fact that they've done it. Or they blame themselves for the fact that their kids turned out terrible or they have terrible memories of other relationships that they themselves... Uh, probably, or th at least that they believe that they've made a mess of themselves. Just looking back over your own life and going, oh boy, did I ever screw it up. And then you die. It's kind of like the comic book guy in The Simpsons when the cruise missile comes flying in and he's reading a comic book. Then he looks up, he sees the cruise missile just about to detonate in his face. And he goes, ooh, I've wasted my life. That was, if you ask me, funny, but it was also one of the bleakest moments in uh, television history. Because... He, the comic book guy is at the point where it's just too late to do anything and here comes the Reaper and lights out and he knows it at the time of his death that he's made a mess of it. Um, but there are people out there, I'm quite certain, who can look back and say, look, I've, um, I've had a satisfying life and now I guess uh, here it comes. I wonder what this is going to be. And in a sense, this is kind of my view of life itself is preparing for that moment because... In the span of infinity, which is where we're pretty much headed as uh, mortals, um, we're going back into zero or everything or nothingness or whatever, but whatever we're heading towards, it's something that looks pretty infinite. Um, in the span of that, our lives are just boom, nothing. Uh, less than a second. So, you know, you... I want to make sure that when I get to that point, at least in terms of what I was capable of doing in my life, I, I can look back at the moment of my death. If I get some dreadful disease tomorrow and die, I'd like to think that I can then look back on my life with some sense of satisfaction, thinking, okay, I did my best, you know, regardless of, of how I actually um, made out, um, I did my best. And uh, to the best of my abilities, I think that that's... that's at least as far as my understanding of these sorts of things goes, I've never been on my deathbed before, um, but I think that as far as I can imagine it, as far as my mind can go in that direction, I, I seem to think that that's probably um, the best way to snuff it, is to go back and you know look back over your life after you uh, when you're about to die and say, well, I uh, gave it my best shot and it was worth it, or I did my best. I think that's the most that any of us can hope to get out of life. But that is something. I, I can't imagine it not being something, uh, simply because uh, that's all life is. It's how you play the hand that's dealt you. And as I mentioned, uh, you know, people living in poverty in the slums of Asia often have a positive attitude towards their life. They have modest goals, modest dreams, and they achieve these dreams, and you ask them, their life is okay. Now, some people have taken me to task for insinuating that um, that uh, David Benatar <laughs> might be insane. Well, I won't really go so far as to say that I believe that he's actually insane. Um, and I think that a lot of people are actually mad at me for my use of the term insane to describe depression. Um, but I'm going to have to go back to that at a later time. But suffice it to say, I'm sticking to my guns on it. And I say that as someone who is a depressive and I say that as someone who believes that depression is like alcoholism. It never goes away. Once a depressive, always a depressive. So if I'm insulting anybody by using that word, I apologize. I don't mean to insult anyone. 
but I'm essentially calling myself insane if I do that. So bear with me on this. I assure you, it's um, it's just uh, I go along with this guy, William Styron, Darkness Visible, where the second title is uh, a memoir of madness. But again, that's a story for another day. Um, David Beneftar, in his book, uh, Better Never to Have Been, um, has a chapter where he says, Why self-assessments assessments of one's life's quality are unreliable. <laughs> this is a very interesting chapter. I'll agree that maybe we have a somewhat um, unbalanced view of our own life. Uh, I am constantly on about how I believe that depressed people have an, an unbalanced view of their own life, so it's entirely possible that I do have an unbalanced view of my own life. I don't know. But what I still don't agree with is how that leads to the conclusion that my assessment of my own quality of life is unreliable. Um, and the implication is, of course, that Benatar knows better than me what kind of quality can be um, can be conferred or how good my life is. That Benatar knows better than I do how much quality my life has. Um, I don't know. It, it, it's hard to actually not think that someone like that is either arrogant or a little bit crazy. Someone who would say something like that and believe it. If, uh, if I'm missing out on something and I'm not facing unpleasant facts, does that mean that my quality of life suffers? No, it doesn't. You can, from the moment you're born, or the moment that you're old enough, rather, to understand your own mortality, you have to come to terms with that fact. One could say that any self-assessment of life is automatically faulty, simply because one's life is going to end. Whatever you say about how good your life is, the fact that you're going to die eventually negates all of it. But again, if you're accepting the fact that you're dealt a certain deck in life, and you're playing your cards according to what you're dealt, randomly as it were, um, then I don't think that anyone else beyond that can actually even have the remotest idea what your quality of life is. Again, there's a there's a cat sleeping over there on the couch, just uh, just like the last time I made this point. I have no idea what that cat's quality of life is. I don't know what quality of life anyone else has. I can't know. Consciousness doesn't work like that. I can't get into their head and experience what they experience and gauge the satisfaction they get out of their own life. I don't care how educated Benatar is, he simply doesn't have the information necessary to make that kind of an assessment. And he can't, in the very nature of things, have that type of information. Nobody can. Human consciousness simply doesn't work like that. <laughs> Thank you.